This will be our 11th message in the, on the subject of assurance. We're speaking about the necessity of assurance. <coughs> and when we speak about assurance, we're not talking about self-assurance. Uh -huh. Or having confidence in yourself or in your own ability. Assurance is a, is a product or offshoot of faith. It's called the full assurance of faith. So it's an aspect of faith or a faith being like the trunk and assurance being like one of the fundamental branches on that tree. It's uh, associated with hope, the full assurance of hope, which means this assurance pertains to the future is living in a full persuasion of what's coming. Not of some doom that's coming, or of a great tribulation that's coming, or an antichrist is coming, but of what's going to be our lot after the heavens and earth pass away, and after the day of judgment, hope is, is there, up there. And this hope imparts this uh, assurance. And it also, of course, proceeds from understanding or comprehension or perception. It's called the full assurance of understanding. That here's how the kingdom of God is. is The more you see of it, the more confident you become. Yeah, amen. The more you can see the inner workings of God as are displayed in salvation, the more assured you become and the less intimidated you are and the more bold you are. Amen. That's what we're speaking about. Now we're, tonight we're addressing the subject of assurance and perseverance. So exactly what is perseverance? Perseverance is persisting it's relentless. Now, it's a continuance. Even though there's a storm and a rain and an enemy and a blockage, there's a continuance. It's holding on. Even when the winds are blowing hard and the circumstances seem against us and everything seems to be failing, it's holding on. That's what we're talking about and being unmovable. No matter how strong the trial is, it doesn't move you off the foundation. Amen. You may feel as though you're weak. You may feel as though things are against you. You may feel very weak and unstable in yourself, but yet you're, you're still on this rock foundation. You've not been moved away from the hope of the gospel. That's what we're talking about in perseverance. So let's look at this just briefly to introduce the subject of perseverance. Perseverance is doing something continually. Now, there's not a lot of people that are noted for this that wear the name Christian. Yeah. There's just too much blowing hot and cold, too much up and down, too much to and fro. So we're talking about something that's different than that. First Chronicles 16:11. Seek the Lord and 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 his strength. Yeah. Seek his face continually. <laughs> oh, what's the cause of person what will cause a person to turn their eyes off the Lord or despair? or go down so low they're not thinking about the Lord anymore. They're so engulfed with the circumstance. They, their thoughts can't rise any higher than the here and now. What is that? That's not being continual. Yeah. Amen. Here's another statement. Hosea 12, 
6. Therefore turn thou to thy God. I mean face him. You've got to be looking toward God to see him. Fa face him. Keep mercy and judgment and wait, wait on thy God continually. There. <laughs> That's perseverance. We're talking about perseverance. So you may be knocked down, but you can look the right direction. You may be uh, to the point where all hope is lost. Thinking you've been appointed unto death. But you can look in the right direction. Continually. Look unto me. All ye ends of the earth. God says, just look. Behold me. Behold me. God shouts when you're down there at the bottom. Think things are going so much against you that it doesn't look like you're going to survive. There's a voice coming from heaven says, Behold me, behold me, look at me. Continually. Continually. Yes, it is. Perseverance. It is holding on your way. Job 17, 9, spiritually primitive times, but here's a word. The righteous also shall hold on his way. Keep on going down the straight and the narrow. He'll hold on his way. And he that hath clean hands will go stronger and stronger. He may be at the moment as weak as water. But he holds on his way. Doesn't get off the road. Doesn't throw in the towel. Doesn't quit. Holds on. Why Jesus himself said, He that endures to the end. That's right. So the blessed thing about it is you endure to the end a day at a time, or maybe perhaps an hour at a time, or sometimes it's at a minute at a time. You endure. That means something's against you, but you endure. It means there's pressing forces that seem to be holding you back, but you endure. To the end, Jesus says, to the end. Two times he said it, endure to the end. He that shall endure to the end shall be saved. He doesn't say he that overcomes all circumstances shall be saved. He that is openly triumphant at all times shall be saved as he that endures. You're the last man standing. After this battle you're going through, huh? Is over? It, it will be over. Amen. After it's over, you're still standing. That's enduring to the end. Endurance. Paul said to Timothy, Now, Timothy, endure hardness. Talk about perseverance here. Endure hardness as a good soldier. Of Jesus Christ. Don't be a spiritual panty waste. Sissy. Giving up. Quitting. Endure hardness. Learn how to last out the storm. Learn how to last out the battle. You just do it moment at a time. But God will. He'll give you no more grace and strength than you need for the moment. Amen. You can't get it in escrow. You can't get a warehouse of grace and a warehouse of strength. You just get it, and if you don't use it, it quits coming. This is the way it works. You endure hardness. Boy, this is very troubling to me, very troubling to me, to see professing Christians that give up. Some people are prone to feel sorry for them. I don't feel sorry for them. I grieve for them. Because just as surely as he that endures to the end shall be saved, he that doesn't shall be lost. Amen. Talk about serious things here. Endurance. Part of this is endurance. If you endure chastening, <laughs> talk about perseverance here. If you endure chastening, God dealing with you with, with sons, you tend to 
become discouraged when the chastening hand of God is upon you. You know you got it coming. And sometimes it's uh, trouble you a lot and oh I wish it would quit. I wish God would quit this chastening. No chasing for the moment seems to be pleasant. He that endures chasing, if you endure it, then you know this truth. God dealing with you is with the Son. Yeah. He could have thrashed you a lot harder than he did. Couldn't he? Yeah. Perseverance involves enduring chastening. How about what James said? Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Yeah. Sinners fall in a moment of time. Hmm. Some people lose all the ground they gain just a few seconds to make a wrong decision. They can't endure temptation. Temptation strikes them and they just tumble down. But the man that endures temptation, when he's tried, he shall receive a crown of life. So in a sense, life is like a trial. Perseverance is enduring temptation. You find that way of escape every time. And sometimes it's just having to endure persecution. Second Thessalonians 1 4, we ourselves glory in you and the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. I mean, you didn't fight back. You didn't retaliate. They didn't speak ill advisedly with your lips. You just took the persecution. While the stones were being hurled. Stephen says, Oh God, lay not this sin to their charge. Amen. What was that? Was enduring. Amen. Persecution. Amen. Paul and Silas there singing. In the midnight hour, when pain's at its worst, yeah. at the midnight hour when troubles are magnified 100, 200, 300 percent, they were singing praises to God. What were they doing? Enduring yeah. persecution. So have you been persecuted? If somebody come against you because you're in Christ, they've took, taken their stand against you. Maybe it's a relative, maybe it's a friend, a neighbor, a family of the, member of the family. Perseverance has to do with enduring that. 2 Timothy 4, 5, Paul says, uh, Watch thou in all things. Be, be alert now, Timothy. Be, be alert. Don't be caught with your eyes closed. Endure afflictions. Afflictions may be from persecution, it may be from circumstances, it may be from a tornado, maybe from an illness. Afflictions endure, last them out. Whatever comes against you is temporary. It is, it's temporary, it's going to end, it's going to pass. Yep. The only issue here is if you endure it. See, endure it. We're talking about perseverance. Now here. 1 Peter 2.19. Let's say you've endured some kind of injustice. That's happened to some of the brethren. Injustices. So Peter says, for, for this is thankworthy. Here's something really to be thankful for. If a man for conscience sake toward God endure grief, suffering, wrongfully. Though where you worked they got on your case and they weren't it wasn't fair. Did the neighbor come out and griped at you because you one of your limbs fell on their yard. They take you to court. You're suffering wrongfully. Whoever gets down to it, they beat you in the public square like they did Paul and Silas. But you take it, you endure it. Even if you're suffering wrongfully. That's perseverance. We're talking about perseverance. Because see, Satan designs these things to abort your progress. 
God designs them so you'll progress through something to something. Amen. And then there's, uh, we talk about perseverance now, then there's steadfastness. That's another word of scripture. We're partakers of Christ. We're made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Now I've lived to see some people start and they didn't finish. You have too. Seen people get up, they got they got kind of a beginning, but they they weren't steadfast to the end. Sometimes the smallest thing throws people some people off course because they're so weak. Be sober and I'll be vigilant for your adversary. The devil walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he must whom he may devour. Steadfast in the faith. <laughs> That's how you do it. So when Satan loses a barrage against you, you just keep on believing. Amen. Talking about perseverance now. And we mentioned continuance, how continuance is such a vital thing. Continuance. Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God. On them was fell, Jews, severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, he continues. Colossians 1.23 says, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. The 1 Timothy 4.16, take heed to thyself and under the doctrine, and continue in them. For in so doing thou shalt save thyself and them that hear thee. See, continuing. Tonight are you at least where you were yesterday? Or this morning? Or have you moved back a little bit? See, only you know. But this is something you need to know. Amen. How am I doing? That's right. Am I continuing in this forward posture? And forward movement is part of persevering. Let that therefore, John says, abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue, continue in the Son and in the Father. So what's the secret to continuing? Is what the Lord has said to you abides in you. As it abides in you, you, you continue or persevere. Hey, here's here's a, another picture or, or perspective of perseverance. It's unmovable. Be steadfast and unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Some people are easily moved. Something happens in their family, whatever, and they're moved to get off center. Yeah. Hmm? They get pretty near to drop out of the race. And they got to do all kind of things to recover. Just a bunch of wasted effort. Not the recovery part, but you should, no person should have to spend so long recovering. Yeah. You need to continue. Be unmovable. Now Satan will test you out. Satan will test you out and God will test you out. See what it take, what does it take to move you? Yeah. Paul said, we're not moved by any of these things. Yeah, he had some things. Yeah, he listed for you in 2 Corinthians 11, 22 and following. <laughs> he had some things. They didn't move us. We stayed right on that center line. That highway of holiness, we stayed, stayed right on. That's perseverance, perseverance. And we mentioned holding. Hold fast that which is good. Don't let it go. Don't let it go. Hold fast and rejoice and if your hope firm to the end. See? That's perseverance. Hold fast our profession. 
It's our confession of Christ. Let's never let our life be inconsistent with that. Hold it fast. Hebrews 10 23 says, Let's hold our profession fast without wavering. You experience the wavering syndrome. You experience that, you just waver. It's like a power flutter. Power flick, flick, flickers on and off. If you got sensitive electrical equipment, you gotta, gotta reset it sometimes. And are you wavering or unwavering? Perseverance has to do with not wavering. Let's hear a testimony of somebody now that persevered. Let's, let's put it in words now. Here it is. 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and 9. We are troubled on every side. Doesn't make any difference. Where we are, we are we've got trouble. And Paul, what do you... What's been your response to it? Not distressed. Yeah. Not distressed. We're not cast down about this. And he said, we are, we, we are perplexed. <laughs> we, don't, we don't know why this happened. Tell you right up front. We passed through this trouble. And we can't see why. We don't, uh, we're perplexed. We're perplexed about this. But we're not in despair. We're not giving up because we don't understand it. We know the one who's running the show. Yep, amen. The testimony, see. We're persecuted. First, I guess so persecuted. Five times beaten with stripes. Forty saved one. Three times beaten with rods. Three times in a shipwreck, perils every place he went, day and the night in the deep. I guess he was oppressed, persecuted, but not forsaken. Not forsaken. Why, Paul and Silas would say we learned to sing with stripes on our back. It's possible to come into fellowship with stripes on your back. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, it's possible to come in singing. Thank God I'm still here. Thank God I still got faith. Thank God I'm still I got the hope of glory. Nothing essential has changed. Jesus is still interceding for me. Holy Spirit is still making intercession for me. Love of God is still living in me. I can still approach to God with boldness. Nothing really has changed. What is that? That's overcoming, that's perseverance, that's what that is. Now you think of the great, uh, the great ifs of scripture and how they pertain to perseverance. John 8, 31, these are the words of Jesus. If ye continue in my word, as perseverance. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Oh, it's a big if, isn't it? See, I'm a follower of Jesus. If you continue in my word, I'll let you follow me. If you continue in my word, I'll teach you. I'll lead you. That's it, though. You got perseverance. You got to see to continue in Christ's word is perseverance. That's what that's what that is. The individual becomes established because he's able to stand in the evil day. Jesus said another place. He said, "If ye abide in me, that's perseverance. If ye abide in me." And my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will. It shall be done unto you. Now there's no, there's no lid on this. There's no limit on this. What you will. We've got a couple of conditions. One is your perseverance. Another is his word staying in you. I'm showing you here. See that a lot hinges on whether a person has perseverance or not. 
Paul said uh, to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 2, it's through the gospel, by the, by the which, by the gospel, by the which you're saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you. So this gospel had to do with Jesus dying, and it has to do with you dying, dying to the world. You can't keep that in memory. What is that? Perseverance. It's keeping that in memory. How about this really simple word? Galatians 6, 9. Let's not be weary in well-doing now, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. That's perseverance. Perseverance. Some people have quit sowing. Yeah, nobody's listening. Everything's against me. Seems like the more I serve God, the more trouble I have. Can't think that way. We shall reap if we faint not. That's another perspective of perseverance. Here's a, here's a big consideration. Colossians 1, 22, 21. Colossians 1, 21. You being that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. As perseverance, you have this held out to Jesus is going to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight, but it's contingent on persevering. Amen. They ain't in there. Yeah, if people believe that, there'll never be a backslider, never be yeah. someone quit. Not if they believe that. Or if he, Hebrews 3, 6, Christ is a son over his own house. Whose house are we? Whose house are we? If we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. You mean I can't be part of Christ's house if I'm not persevering? That's right. That's exactly right. Jesus won't let you stay in the house. He'll throw you out like he did Ishmael. Don't doubt it for a minute. Jesus isn't going to allow anybody to live in his house. They can't continue. Amen. Or I hear it is again, Hebrews 3.14, For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Yeah. And I was growing up, Christian service camps were popular. They were a little bit different than they are today, but we didn't go there to play games, you know. We'd teach and learn the things of God, and we'd sit around Vesper fires and hear challenges to serve God, and some of us would rededicate our life and say, we're going to serve God, you know, and we'd come back full of vim and vigor for Christ, and we'd get back into the church. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you, people, people will tell you, well, you're... You're just young. This will all, this will all wear off, and pretty soon you'll be like the rest of us. And it was awful hard to maintain that spiritual vitality when you got back with these best valley of dry bones. It's like an eagle. I mean, an eagle being confined to a chicken yard would be. <laughs> get kind of discouraged. One of their wings got wounded, you know, and they're walking around with these chickens are pecking in the dirt and they can't get have to really work to get up on top of a fence post and this is an eagle, you know. Continuance keeps hope when the wings are broken. He says, I may have to walk around here for a while, but I'm getting out of this chicken yard. I'm not going to stay here pecking on corn. I've been made to eat meat. 
Perseverance. See, that's, that's a little picture of what perseverance is. Now, all right, the question that I'll briefly answer is, so how does assurance fit in with all this? Well, assurance is the thing that reaches forward. It can't reach backward. It reaches forward and perceives a conclusion of things. And if you're assured that you're part of that, you can persevere. Twice David said, Psalm 157, 7, Psalm 108, 1, My heart is fixed. He didn't mean fixed like I fixed the car. It means fixed like I'm not going to move. My, I, I fasten my eyes on the goal and I'm not moving. You can only do that if you're assured. You can only do that if you have assurance. If you don't have assurance that you have, that you have a part in the glory to come, the race of Frank can get too hard for you. Pretty soon you'll be dropping out. But if you have the assurance, you, you, say, you see your name over there. On the other side is a, like a wall with plaques on it. You look over there and say, hey, hey, I see my name's written in heaven. What does that do for you? Gives you the ability to persevere. Keep going. The individual becomes established as they keep faith and then assurance brings that. Hebrews 13 9 says oh, don't be carried away about with diverse and strange doctrines. Don't oh, be listening to this faddish stuff that is being hawked in the name of Christ. It's a good thing that the heart be established with grace not with meats. I say it's a good thing that the heart be established. That's assurance. See assurance is what establishes you. It isn't that you grow so far and finally you know, you know, you know enough things so that they all add up to assurance. It's, it's, in, your, it's in your head. But no, it's, it's when you know by experience and you're persuaded that he's able to keep you. You're persuaded that nothing can separate you from the love of God. You're persuaded of that. That's what enables you to persevere. You can't persevere just because you're supposed to. That's right. You can't say, well, God's commanded me to persevere, and I'm going to persevere. So there you are. That's not the way it works. Why doesn't it work that way? Because that doesn't place God and Christ in the equation. God's not going to let anybody get to heaven without them. There's no point where salvation excludes the necessity of divine involvement. But when you know that, that enables you to become a perseverer. And firmness, there's a firmness that comes from assurance. Hebrews 3, 6 says, Christ is a son over his own house if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope. Firm, firm, under the end. That, that's perseverance. Holding the hope firm. you got to firm. The winds come. They, they jostle you. But you keep hold of this. Ah, you won't let it go. Is it bringing too much to me? This hope is bringing too much to me. I'm not about to let it go. Person, well, we don't know what proof do we have. What proof do you have? Your name is written in heavens. I can't explain it to you now, but I'm not letting go of this. That's the part perseverance has to uh, assurance has to perseverance. See, that's why hope is called an anchor. Both steadfast and sure. Our anchors upward, cast upward. In the earth, the anchors cast downward. And the picture is you're on a troubled sea, and it's trying to take the boat and get it up against the rocks or suck it down into the deep or something. But this anchor, it's hooked to the to the bottom of the sea, and it keeps you keeps you on top of the water, and keeps you from moving to dangerous territory. But in this case of our anchor is upward, is anchored in heaven. That lifeline from here to there, that's, that's assurance. <laughs> that's the full assurance of hope. See that rope, it 
keeping the anchor available to us. That's what assurance is. And when you hold on to that, you can last out the storm, brethren, no matter what it is. You can last it out. Hold it, hold it firm. Now, here's what, here's what assurance can do. You can take a man, he's 40 years, he's lived in Egypt. He goes out of Egypt, flees Egypt. He's 20 years in the desert, 40 years in the desert, that's 80 years he's been without any, like, immediate contact with God. Even though his name was in heaven, God separated him long before Moses knew about it. God separated him, but he... How did he last out those 80 years? 40 with the temptations of Egypt drawn at him. 40 in the desert were quite a leap from the palace to the desert. Well, the scripture says he endured. Hebrews 11, 27. He endured. He endured as seeing him who is invisible. What is that seeing him that is invisible? That's assurance. Assurance is like a good set of eyes. Sees him who is invisible. So invisible things come against someone who sees him who is invisible. It doesn't move him. Because he that's invisible is over all, all things. Paul is in the midst of trouble. He's, in, he's sitting in jail. He's in the midst of trouble. How are you going to react now, Paul? How are you going to react? Are you going to be able to endure this, Paul? Are you going to be able to last out this imprisonment here? I mean, he wasn't living, you know, in uh, electronic driven prisons with a lot of entertainment and a yard you could work out and, and you know, all this. He didn't have that. This is, it was on a deep cell under the ground. How are you going to last out? What do you think of this, Paul? You've been ordained a preacher. Hey, here you are in jail. Bad circumstances. Well, you holler down that pit down there. What about it, Paul? What do you think of this circumstance? It looks pretty bad. We've been praying for you. He shouts back. I know that this shall turn to my salvation. What was that? That's assurance. He could persevere in that cell and write some letters to encourage the rest of us. <laughs> oh, you've probably heard a lot of words of encouragement from people that have been oppressed. People that were going through a trial themselves. Lo and behold, they lifted up you. They lifted you up and said, "This is going to turn out. Now this is all going to turn out. Not always going to be this way." We're talking about salvation here. We're not talking about just that the trouble ends. We're talking about salvation. That's deliverance. Salvation is deliverance. And I know. I know it's going to turn out to my salvation. It's going to turn out through your prayer and the Spirit of, of God. It's going, so it's going to work out all right. It's the relationship of assurance to perseverance. 1 Peter 5.10. Now here's this little, little, let's let assurance do some talking here. And it will convince you that you can persevere if you see this. First Peter 5.10 The God of all grace. Alright, Adam, we've got to get our eyes fixed on that now. Not some grace. God of all grace, who's called us unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After, after you have suffered a while. Yeah. After you've suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. You hear that, comes in your ear. So, this suffering is just for a while, you say? Yeah, yeah just a while. After you suffer for a while, just a while. And after you suffer for a while, when every form of sound reason would tell you after you suffer for a while, you're weak, wouldn't it? Every form of sound reason would tell you after you've gone through a difficult time, <sighs> leaves you weak. After you have suffered a while, will perfect, establish, and strengthen. So it's just exactly opposite of what happens in the flesh. See, assurance 
It knows what's going to happen after death. And so it fuels perseverance. Because I'm willing now. I'm willing now that knowing what I know now. I'm willing to be absent from the body and at present with the Lord. What is that? That's assurance fueling perseverance. In our text for the evening, I'm persuaded. That's assurance. I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What is that? That's assurance. That's assurance articulated and spelled out. And what it is saying is, I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. Amen. I'm not going to slacken my pace. I'm not going to slow down, wait for others to catch up. Yeah. I'm going to persevere because I know this is true. Whatever lies between me and the goal, none of us know what it is. There's things in my own life that was between me and the goal I never dreamed could happen, but it ain't happened. They didn't change my resolve. <laughs> they didn't change my resolve. And if you have your eyes, if you have assurance, they won't change yours other years either. If you know nothing between here and there <coughs> can stop God from loving me. And if God loves me, if it means he's got to carry me, he'll pick me up and tote me in. Gently carry those that are with the young. He'll do it. Yes. He'll put me on his shoulder and bring me in. He'll do it. If I know that, I have no doubts about it. I'll persevere. Assurance thinks like this. I'm true, I'm suffering now. Things aren't going so well for me now. Sometimes people will say to you, I feel so sorry for you. You've had to do this. Yeah, I understand. I'd feel that way about you too, but let me tell you something. I know a secret that caused me to look down on these sufferings. I look down on them. I despise them. Because I know henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, Amen. which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give unto me, and not to me only, but all those that love his appearing. Uh -huh. See, and with the armed, with that assurance, you can persevere. So unsure Christians that are unstable and ungrounded, weak and vulnerable, they're in a dangerous condition. They may be really nice people, but that's a dangerous condition. Salvation is calculated to see to be worked out in an environment of fierce competition. That's how it's designed to work. You'll find out that Peaceful, tranquil situations tend to disarm you. Yeah. The superiority of faith is made known in the working out of salvation. You come up against these things. God has said that this is a victory over God's world, even our faith. But you've got to be in the crucible of experience to find that out. Sometimes it's after it's over, you say, you know, that wasn't so bad after all. Yeah, we'll admit to you, you were scared. We were a little bit scared there for a while. We didn't know if we were going to continue to live or not. But we, uh, we decided while we were under that piece of wallboard, we decided to hold on. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so I may say, we're taking you to court. That's what we're doing. We're taking you to court. We'll show you. And we just, uh, I decided to hang on. Amen. I'm going to hold on now. I'm going to persevere, and I'm going to let I'm going to let the Lord settle this whole thing, Amen. settle this dispute. Yeah. So salvation is a process that commences from deliverance from sin and the devil and the world, and being faithful through life, it will conclude with by reigning with Christ. Yeah. Amen. Now the secret is to be convinced of that, yes. they, to have assurance. You can't buy this, 
can't buy this assurance. There's no secret tip or shortcut to obtaining it. No one's ever written a book on how to be assured. You know, you <laughs> but when you live for God, when you live unto Him that died for you and rose again, God will see to it that you get assurance. Amen. And when you've got assurance, it's like a strong iron vessel yeah. that will take you through the sea of life Amen. and land you on the, land, on the courts of heaven. Brother Jean has our exhortation tonight. Amen.